easy to step into corruption when you think you are hearing God. Beware of people who hear God. Be very careful. The Bible says in the book of um, I think somewhere in either Galatians or Colossians somewhere there. It says for God has spoken to us in these last days through his son. But prior to that point, he said, for God spoke to us through the prophets. Is it correct? Through the prophets. Through the prophets. So, in other words, in the Old Testament, the reliable source of the voice of God was through his appointed, ordained, approved, track recorded prophets. Even the days of the major prophets, there were other prophets who claimed to have heard from God. Oh, come on. There's what we call the the season of it's called the season of silence. The 400 years of silence. In that 400 years of silence, it was believed that the last prophet of that time was Malachi. If you look at the Old Testament, okay, you see from Genesis to Malachi was where it ended. From Malachi to Matthew was what we call 400 period of silence, where it is believed that God didn't speak. That silence was broken when the angel of the Lord appeared to Zechariah, the high priest the father of John the Baptist with a word from God and said your, your wife will conceive a son and his name shall be called John the man didn't believe it and the angel of the Lord struck him deaf and dumb now from Malachi down to Matthew there were so many prophets who rose who rose? So many prophets rose, but they were not of God. Did they hear things from God? They, they heard. Here's what I'm going to tell you. A sign, this, this is a case study right now for all of you. The first thing the Bible spoke about when it comes to your, your relationship with the world beyond the instruction was, test every spirit. That's the first instruction. Because spirits are seductive. Oh. That is that side of a man that when you begin to hear things or see things, it is assumed that it is of God. A sign, listen to this. You can begin well. God might reveal himself the first time. But once you begin to crave for it, you see, encounters come from God. It's not something you crave for. For your balancing, and I was sharing with one of my daughters a couple of times ago, I said, the mistakes most people make, here's the point, is when you begin to ascend into realms, that's why I don't open it much for people. One, one, one somebody asked me, I said, Papa John, why, how, why did you help that lady to come out of the realm? You, know, you remember, I, prayed, I said, I will not let her go. I said, I took her there. I should bring her out. Oh, it's, oh, I got it. And then she said, why? I said, because when you enter into realms beyond here, 90% of the times, the 
people come out with an error. If you're not guided in the spirit, you could get into a certain dimension and you come out with gross error without knowing it. Because, like I said, spirits are seductive. The Bible says, giving heed to seducing spirits. You need the rebuke, the correction, the leadership of fathers. For self, safe guide in the things of the spirit. Now, for the first time, Jesus decided to show another dimension to a few portion of his disciples. He didn't go with all of them. He took only the three, James, Peter, and John, and went to where? The Mount of Transfiguration. And there he began to pray, and suddenly a dimension in the spirit descended upon them. And then the Lord decided to grant Peter, James, and John the privilege to see, to perceive, and to be part of that reign of the Spirit. They were caught up into the dimension. And immediately, wow, Peter was caught up in the vision of the Lord. James was there. Paul, I mean, uh, 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 John was there. They saw something that they've never seen before. And the Bible says that they saw Moses. Nobody told them that Moses, that, that that was Moses. They knew. Because in that realm, you know things. They knew. And they saw Jesus chatting, interacting. Speaking, meeting, oh, glory to God, with Moses and Elijah. And immediately they were done. The cloud was lifted. And immediately Peter spoke error. An error emerged. He said, Oh Lord, let us build a tabernacle, a temple. For Moses here and Elisha. Oh, that's what happens when people have encounters. They quickly establish an error. An error is established instantly. And Jesus ignored them instantly. Get out of here, my friend. And he never took them the second time. Never. They forgot that Jesus was the substance of Moses. Jesus was what Moses was trying to preach. Oh, come on. Jesus was the message of Elijah. They didn't know that greater than Moses was with them. Greater than the message of Elijah was with them. So sometimes our encounters, we, we, it, when, when, a, when an encounter is not of God, it begins to drift you away from the substance. You got that. So that's what Paul says. Even though you have heard a message okay, from an angel or from any creature that is not in line with that which we have taught you, he said it's not of God. So why am I saying this? Once God calls us to separation get ready for encounters but here's what I'm going to ask you to do while you are stepping into series of encounters 
we will evaluate your quality of obedience, purity of heart, submission to spiritual authority, then we can tell if you're hearing from God.